Broad jumps, skips, bounds, plyometrics are proven to improve power, momentum, and even get you running faster in your high rocks race. These are 10 plyometric exercises that are going to do just that. Let's get into it. So let's start off simple, but big. The first two exercises straight off the back are going to improve your 1K time splits and every single station, especially those ergs. You can do hurdle hops, and you can do repeat broad jumps. Both movements can be scaled accordingly. Take hurdle hops. When we jump over the hurdle, we can jump higher, and we could jump further. And we can even do single leg. So let's take broad jumps for an example. So instead of working on four, five, six reps, you can just simply do one, two, or three reps and focus on distance rather than that springiness and power. So you can alter both of these exercises based on the individual doing the plyometric. So if you look at those exercises, if you're doing the hurdle hops, maybe do four sets of six reps. And if you're doing the broad jumps, maybe three sets of five. So guys, that's two exercises straight off the back. Let's keep it going. So how do plyometrics work? How do they help you with your running, your sled work, your burpee broad jumps, your lunges, and everything else in between? Well they help you by making you more explosive. And you need to be explosive if you're a high rocks competitor. Now, lifting heavy weights will get you faster because it allows you to recruit what's called high threshold motor units, those fast twitch muscle fibers, which are fantastic. However, it's somewhat limited. And that's why moving your body weight fast helps. Plyometrics will teach your brain how to activate those high threshold motor units, those fast twitch muscle fibers at a very, very extraordinarily fast rates whilst at the same time producing high levels of force. So because of this, they are very, very demanding and they are very fatiguing on that central nervous system, which means you wanna do them as early on in the week as possible when you're feeling most fresh or before your training session. Inside of my online coaching, we utilize plyometrics from day one. Whether it is with extensive slow plyometrics that will develop capacity and give you confidence to jump and move your body weight, or at the more advanced level where we are all about developing explosive repeat power. I love my beginner clients to use plyometrics at the beginning of a lower body workout or before a speed session. And for my more advanced athletes, we can dedicate a whole day to plyometric skill. And that's because plyometrics require a large amount of coordination and forces to be produced at a very short time frame, making you more athletic. Some days we need to focus on developing running capacity, lactate threshold, strength, building muscle, injury prevention. And then some days we need to focus on moving fast and explosive with our body weight so that it will help us with our running, our pushing, our pulling, and our ergs. I'm gonna give you eight more movements and I can guarantee some of these movements you have never seen before. But they are all things that you can do to get more explosive to become a better high rocks athlete. And the cool thing about them all is that you don't need any equipment whatsoever. All you need is your body weight and somewhere to jump. The next exercise is a big one, is the repeat tuck jump. Focus on keeping your trunk nice and upright and bringing those knees as high as possible. Do four sets of four. Boom. As soon as those feet touch the floor, a quick springy counter movement, getting those knees nice and high. Rest anywhere between 120 seconds up to 180 seconds and repeat. Now the next exercise is a tuck jump progression. And with this progression, you've got two options. After doing three, four, five tuck jumps, you can add a horizontal movement such as the broad jump or a vertical movement such as the box jump. Oh. And this is where we can begin to use what's called jump series, where we put exercises together. So three tuck jumps into three broad jumps or three tuck jumps into three box jumps. Now this is a little bit more for intermediate to advanced athletes, but doing these will expose you to variation, progressive overload, neuromuscular adaptation, and enhanced conditioning, which will make all of your high rocks competition way easier, especially those exercises such as the bro broad jumps. Now let's rein it back a little bit. This next one is gonna be for anyone who is newer to training, beginners. Maybe you're new to running or you keep getting lower limb injuries, plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendon problems, hamstring problems, knee problems. Even if you are intermediate to advanced, these next group of exercises are fantastic to do in your warm up before weights and strength training and before your runs. Pogos. Now what I love about pogos is that they are just so, so simple, so, so effective, and they aren't too taxing or fatiguing. So you could probably do them every day without accumulating too much fatigue. So what you wanna do is put your hands on your hips, stay nice and tall with your posture, and focus on your ankles doing most of the work. Now you can do these going forward. You can do them going backwards. You can even do them going sideways. 
And if you are new to jump in and that's just maybe a little bit too much, you can go into a single leg variation. That's a great way to deload your body mass and work on that single leg strength. Do anywhere between 10 to 20 reps and take 60 to 90 seconds rest. The beauty about pogos is that they will increase what's called ankle stiffness, which will help reduce the risk of injury and maximize your running potential. You're gonna build up soft tissue tolerance and pretty much just making your calves, your ankles, your knees and your hips way more robust and way more resilient. Now next up are the running specific plyometrics. And the first one we're gonna go into is a skip variation. What we wanna do is three reps on each leg. Now you can progress that with distance and height, but what we really wanna focus on there is being rhythmic and cycling through that pattern. You could then move that skipping variation into what's called the A skip. Now, if you are familiar with running or athletics, you may have heard of this one, but maybe not. This is incredible for power and coordination. First of all, it helps running mechanics by reinforcing good mechanics, knee drive, hip extension, dorsiflexion of the ankle. It also helps strengthen the hip flexor, which is critical for stride length and running speed. And lastly, it enhances coordination and rhythm. Let's crank up that intensity a little bit more with my personal favorite, the kneeling jump. Now for this, you need some serious mobility and stability, especially around this hip region. With the use of the arms, you can use them to create momentum to help you get up. Now to make it more difficult, you can keep your hands in a fixed position, or you can even load weight on the back of the shoulders. Simply do five sets of three with two to three minute rests. Now, just like those tuck jumps, we can also use this when it comes to jumping series. You can do one of those jumps into a broad jump, or you can do one of those jumps into a box jump. Now, should we be jumping off one leg or should we be jumping off two? If we look at the demands in a high rocks race, when we run, when we sled push, when we do our lunges, we are working off one leg. However, when we do our ski erg, when we do our rower, when we do our wall balls, we're working off two. So it's really important that we train both bilateral plyometrics and unilateral plyometrics. And that's going to take us onto the last two movements. The next exercise is a single leg plyometric, which is going to teach us how to produce power and force from those deep positions. This one is called the drop lunge. The cool thing about a drop lunge is that it is exposing you to using single leg power and force in this long stride position. But you can also play with that. If you are someone who prefers a short stride when you lunge, simply shorten the stride that you do the drop lunge at. It's not only going to help produce power and force, but it's also gonna allow you to build good hip mobility, which will help you with your stride performance. All right, we have made it. We are at the final exercise. Can you guess what it is? We are missing one last thing. Is it the box jump? Is it a ball throw? No. It's sprinting. Sprinting is probably the best plyometric exercise that you can be doing. High rocks athletes tend to spend most of the time in one of two zones. They end up spending time in this first zone, which is slow, repetitive, long duration based work, or this second zone, which is sort of moderate pace, right? Where they're doing lots of compromised runs, they're doing lots of wads and circuits and things like that. High rocks athletes just aren't spending enough time sprinting and moving explosively. Now, yes, you aren't going to sprint your 1K repeats. However, exposure the sprinting, high speeds, high velocities, high amounts of forces will help those 1Ks get faster. Think about it this way. We have on one end of the spectrum, we have these fast, explosive, dynamic sports, 100 meters, 200 meters, 400 meters, hurdles, weightlifting. The majority of their training is made up of heavy weightlifting, fast, dynamic, explosive movements, lots of plyometrics. However, for them to recover well, get the adaptations, allow themselves to train at those intensities and levels, they have to have a very good aerobic base, which means they do that low intensity work every other day. Now, if we consider what the high rocks athlete is, it's almost a complete opposite. Very, very aerobically driven, but you can't just do long steady state runs, tempo runs, threshold runs. You have to expose yourself to those fast, explosive, high velocity workouts. And that's where sprinting and jumping comes into play. So guys, remember to be a great high rocks athlete, it's not just about increasing your aerobic ceiling and working on your lactate threshold, which is still very, very important. It's all about being powerful, but being able to produce that power repeatedly. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Please share the video, please like the video, please subscribe to the channel. More high rocks, hybrid training coming your way. And if you would like to work with me, there is a link in the description below. Fill out the application form, let's book a call and see if we're a good fit.